Thank you, Noah. So my charge is to discuss why and when a direct repair of the MCL is a great option. Uh, can we go next, Mike? It's not advanced. Yes. Um, so as we know, UCL reconstruction today, almost all some variations of surgical reconstruction with a free graft requires to eight, 12 to 18 months to return to play, generally high success rates of 80 to 90% with low complication rates. But why not something better? Are we doing too much of an operation for some of the pathology that we're presented with? And is primary repair a reasonable option for some patients? If we look at the history of repair, Conway and Job, when they reported on Dr. Job's original series, there were 14 repairs in this group. But re really what sounded the death knell for the repair was that in the major league players who had repairs, only two out of seven returned to the same level of play. So repair fell out of favor very early on. Historically, there's been very little evidence and the early techniques lacked our current modern anchor and suture technology and the vast clinical experience we now have with UCL surgery. We now have smaller, stronger anchor technology, super sutures and super tapes and biologic additives that make it possible to consider repair. Buddy Sabo in 2006 opened the door again to consider this. He looked at repairs in 18 female athletes, 16 of 17 were able to return to the previous level of repair in just under three months time, so significantly shorter. He then expanded his experience with this and reported on it in 2008, 60 patients, 51 of 60 who went suture anchor repair, 93% good to excellent, and 58 out of 60 returned to the same or higher level of play and an average of six months post-op. So it appeared like there was potentially a future for repair. Jeff Dugas, who follows me here and who has now published this information to AJSM, uh, did a cadaveric biomechanical study where he looked at a distal avulsion model and compared repair to reconstruction. He did some MTS cyclical loading and load to failure, looked at gap formation and load to failure and the failure location and mode. And what he found was that the gap formation after cyclical loading was uh, greater in the reconstruction than the repair. So the repair did better at preventing gap formation. The load to failure was equal with repair and reconstruction. And he concluded that at time zero, the repair was at least as good at the reconstruction. So who are potential repair candidates? Well, generally younger patients with acute injuries, typically proximal or distal avulsions with good tissue. So you can see a proximal avulsion on the left MRI slide, a distal avulsion on the middle one, and a more chronic thickened abnormal ligament that would not be considered a good candidate for repair on the right slide. My current indications include a high grade partial or complete tear, specifically an avulsion type tear at the proximal origin or distal insertion with good overall ligament tissue. It's difficult to qualify that. Do we do that based on inspection at the time of surgery or MRI? I use a combination of both. Clearly there should be no intraarticular pathology or associated valgus extension overload. And generally I can find this to age 25 or less. Here you can see an example of a complete distal avulsion. On the clinical slide, the hand is to the left, the shoulders to the right. Forceps has the avulsed distal portion of the ulnar collateral ligament. I place my, uh, my uh, suture and the uh, suture tape distally at the sublime tubercle. I use the two small number one tichrons to directly repair the ligament, close the split in the ligament, and then overlie it with the fiber tape, placing the second anchor at the medial epicondyle, as you see here. This was my initial experience, 34 patients, all male, all baseball players, young group, 20 age on average. 100% uh, return to the same level of play at an average of 6.5 months with a KJOX score of about 93. All 34 were satisfied with no complications. Jeff Dugas recently published his experience in over 100 overhead athletes, two-year minimal follow-up, 92% return to play and an average of 6.7 months with a mean KJOX score of 88.2. We've recently submitted our experience with 127 baseball players. You can see the breakdown there. Again, a young group, average uh, follow-up of at least one year after return to play, 93.7 return to play at the same level, average of 6.75 months with a KJOX score of 90.8. The majority of those are satisfied. There were three failures that required revision surgery, including reconstruction. Looking at different subgroups, this is a group of 17 wrestlers that we've looked at, mostly high school, Young again, these athletes have a more severe injury pattern. 14 out of 17 had a proximal tear that extended into the anterior capsule. 
These were followed for two years after return to play, 94% returned to the same level, just under six months, and the majority satisfied. One had continued pain, no revisions required. And then this is our index case, the gymnast. This is 11 gymnasts, all females, seven high school, four college. These are all level eight or higher gymnasts, average age just over 16 years. The majority of these were distal tears. They were followed for return to play plus at least one year. Nine out of 11 returned to play, but this was a much more prolonged return to play than the throwers or the wrestlers. Oh, set. 11 months, nine of 11 were satisfied. The two who were dissatisfied had continued pain and weren't able to return to gymnastics. So this is a great operation for the right player or the right athlete. The younger athlete under age 25, proximal or distal avulsion injury with good overall ligament tissue, excellent short and midterm results, equal to or greater than primary Tommy John procedure with a low revision rate. This is the patient for a primary repair. Thank you.